evening, everyone. Welcome to the Upper Room Fellowship of Jesus Christ Friday Night Bible Study. I'm Pastor Tyrone. I have Pastor Steve with me this evening. And we will finish up Ecclesiastes chapter 1, part 2. But before we start, let us pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for just being with us this evening. We know where two or three are gathered, you're in the midst of us. We surrender this study over to you. We pray that you just guide us and lead us and give us your wisdom and knowledge and understanding as we study your word this evening. And just let us all have a wonderful, blessed time in your word. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. 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 Okay, previously, previously we talked about Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 2. And it says, Vanity of vanity, says the preacher. Vanity of vanities, all is vanity. Amen. Amen. Verse 4 says, One generation passes away, and another generation comes, but the earth abides forever. Verse 9, That which has been is what will be, that which is done is what will be done, and there is nothing new under the sun. Amen. Amen. Any comments before we continue? That last verse right there is deep. Like, I think if people really looked into it, you it would change people's perspective. Like, yes. Yeah, the ways of men and the things done. And we talked about not learning from our mistakes, mm -hmm. right? Yes. But God knows already. He truly does. Yeah. Okay, moving forward. We we'll continue Ecclesiastes chapter one, verse ten, and it says, "There is anything of which they may be said. See, this is new; it has already been in ancient times before us." Amen. Is anything that will be said? See, this is new. You know, we talk about, you know. Technology and all those things may be new, but it's still the same. There is nothing new under the sun. You know, people are still violent and, and the ways are still the same and the things they do are still the same. Just like ancient times before us. We can see that there is truly, the methods may be different, but it's still all the same. Mm -hmm. I read somewhere that <clears throat> back in, in, in the ancient times, there's evidence of brain surgery. Really? Yes. Brain surgery. Yes. Brain surgery. Yep. Yep, they were opening people up and, and going in and taking stuff out, I guess. Removing tumors and swelling and all of that stuff, probably. The Egyptians used um, that sharp black stone. They had scalpels sharper than scalpels we can use today. They really? found them in the in their tombs and stuff. Yeah, really, really, really sharp stuff. <clears throat> but you know, we talk about lost civilizations and things from way long ago. The Bible confirms it. The days of Noah, just as in the days of Noah. People will be eating and drinking and giving in marriage and all mm -hmm. that stuff. The cycle of events that God shows us is that he brings a group of people through and ultimately it degenerates and it falls apart and then he has to start over. And then we have the Israelites and they went through their process and it really went bad for them. And then he brought the church age in and it was good at the beginning and it took a different turn and then it started to languish and it turned into paganism and it's the it's just the same cycle over and over again yes um yeah it's uh, the same history it's itself basically. right mm -hmm. yeah yes different different churches different denominations and, wow excuse me <clears throat> Mm -hmm. You're right. Denominations. Is that in the Bible? 
actually it says in, in the New Testament, like saying, if I'm for this, well, I'm with this person and I'm with that person, that's that's totally against God's way. You know, there's a, I, I forgot the the verse, but uh, yeah. Any other comments? All right, supporting verse, Ecclesiastes chapter 2, verse 12. Then I turned myself to consider wisdom and madness and folly. For what can the man do who succeeds the king? Only what he has already done. The man. Not according to these people running for office. <laughs> no. Yeah. Say then, but you still do the same things. Of course, of course. They do or say all these things to get elected. They turn back to madness and folly, okay? <laughs> Man cannot govern himself. Absolutely. Nothing yeah. Any other comments? They build skyscrapers today, but guess what? The Babylonians did it mm -hmm. in the book of Genesis. Okay. Hold on. There is no remembrance of former things, nor will there be any remembrance of the things that are to come, those who will come after. That's so sad. <laughs> Why is that sad? Well, I mean, if you think about like what happened in World War II, well, I mean, you could look at all the world wars, but, you know, the whole Hitler thing and then the Japanese and the bombing of Hiroshima, what well, bombing of um, terrible. the nuclear. The atomic bomb. Terrible. That was China, right? No. Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Okay. And now, you know, there, we have nuclear weapons. We have these kind of weapons that can just cause such horrible things to happen to people, not just kill them, but cause diseases and, you know, and we don't remember. We don't learn from the past. Because the motivation, the love of money is the root of all evil, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Right. We're trying to do something to make money. <laughs> you know. mm -hmm. Hey, we can put some sugar and color in some sparkling water and make 3,000% profit, but who cares if it's killing people? Right? <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. But that's just the human nature. That's, that's the devil. That's an influence mankind. And that's why we need God. There is no remembrance of the things of that. I mean, that's why we learn the issues that we have in the magazines and the sad things, wars, and all those things. Those and, things and are I, not remembered. They're celebrated now. They're not remembered. And in our time, I mean, they they don't even want to teach true history in the schools because people don't want to be reminded of the kind of things that the atrocities that happened here in our own country, you know, whether it be to the Native American or to the black slaves. Um, that people don't want to be convicted of what they did. Forget those things as if it never happened. It was too bad. Too bad to remember or to admit. Say, yeah, I did that. I 
to kill all those people. Well, I, I mean, it's not crazy. that it's not that person that did it, but it, but our society allowed it to happen. You know, and people say, "Well, I didn't have slaves," even though, I mean, but their ancestors did, and and there was such mistreatment and treating them as if they weren't human beings, you know. God must have really, I don't know, he must have really frowned upon that. I mean, and then how the Egyptians, when they were enslaved in Egypt, they were treated so poorly. The Israelites? Hmm? You the mean Israelites. the Israelites in Egypt? Yeah. Uh, yeah, okay. Mm hmm but see, God knew that was going to happen and there was a purpose behind it, all of it, mm -hmm. right? And so that's why when you, when we look at the world and we try to see what's right and just and all that, you know, that, that we're all we're just going to get frustrated and judgmental, but that's not it. God is in control. He allows things to happen for a purpose. And so... Whatever it is, and whatever our situation is, we can talk here because we're free and comfortable, but we may have been born in one of those situations. And he says, whatever situation you're in, behave like a Christian, walk in love. It doesn't matter. It's not your situation. It's about your relationship with me. And I'm going to bring you through things that will only make you better. Like you asked this morning. Let me see things from your perspective. Right, and then we'll be free of, of all this who did what and all that because God knows, and God saw it, he was there. That's right, so we do have to change our perspective for sure. God knows it all. He sees it all. And everything happens in his time. And he wrote it all down. Hmm. We can't deny it. That's right. We know it's true. We, yeah, we know it's true. It's self. Uh, it unveils its, the truth unveils its, unveils itself. And so we have no choice but to admit it and abide by it. Otherwise, we're gone. And we don't exist. We cannot exist without love, mercy, and grace, and love, and God. That's what he is. That's who he is. That's just to remember the things of God. Of God for sure. That's what we should remember. Amen. Eternal things. Eternal things. <laughs> what? Any other comments? All right, Luke 17, verse 26. And as it was in the day, <laughs> as, it, as it was in the days of Noah, so it will also be in the days of the Son of Man. Touche. Second witness. Praise the Lord. Praise yep. The Lord. And though none of us were there, other than in someone's DNA that was passed on through the flood and everything. But yeah, we, we don't remember what happened. We can read about it, but we weren't there. But yeah, Jesus confirms it's the same. Verse 12, I, the preacher, was king over Israel in Jerusalem. Because he just wanted to remind us. <laughs> <laughs> he's, 
I mean, he was he king, but he's a preacher too. <laughs> yeah. Just in case nobody knew. <laughs> See, document that, yeah. So we we know this came from King Solomon. Yes. First Kings chapter four verse one. So King Solomon was king over all Israel. That's a pretty good supporting verse right there. Move on. Mm -hmm. Okay. Verse 13. And I set my heart to seek, search out with concerning all that is under the under heaven. This burdensome task God has given to the Son of Man, by which they may be exercised. So on the earth, right? So God under heaven is means on the earth, right? Right. The heaven above, earth below. And he's given this task to the sons of man. That's right. He said, Go go on the earth, be fruitful and uh, and multiply and subdue it. So, and learn, learn from nature, learn how everything works, which we have done, right? Some people look, take that learning and want to take God out of it. Mm -hmm. But really, all they're doing is analyzing how God made everything and how it all works. But they didn't make it. God did. Mm -hmm. So, it's part of our purpose here is, is to learn about God through his creation. Amen. Yes. And learn how his and this is probably the same thing that you just said. Learn how his creation works for us. Which is why he, he created what he created oh. for our benefit. Well, that's true. That's true. Yes. yes. Absolutely. No oxygen we wouldn't breathe, right? We couldn't exist. So we need the trees, right? So we have oxygen. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Everything. We need, we need everything. All this, the, yeah, all the plants, the, how everything is, is made to, to work together. Mm -hmm. Plants, animals, they need each other. Mm -hmm. Yes. I was just sharing on Wednesday about gardening and Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and learn, learning about God and his ways by watching how it, what it takes to make something fruitful is, is there, there's care and feeding that God has to do in us too, right? So right. it reveals God's ways. And when he had Adam tend the garden or has us tend the garden, you learn about, okay, what to prune and when to prune it. And there's a season for everything and what it needs, and the sun, and the water. And we need the spirit of the water, and the sun, the word of God, the light. All of that is is the work. So his creation, we, uh, we uh, look at how everything is done, and we get to learn about God's ways. Yeah. Raising children, all of that. Yeah. But this shouldn't be burdensome. It says this is burdensome. This burdensome task God has given us. Well, remember in Ecclesiastes 12, he says the, the making and reading of many books is wearisome to the flesh, right? Right. Because you can study and study, and it is kind of burdensome. burdensome you, yeah. you know. Um, yeah. But, well, I don't want to give away the okay. end, end of chapter 12, so. No, I was going to say that we've got to be doing it in one of the things. Um, because if it's God driving it, burn. Well, um, sense. when Adam and Eve were cast out of the garden, he says, out of the sweat of your brow, you're going to toil, right? Yeah, it was right. So it's, 
and, and we're all under that same curse in a sense, right? Okay. You know, everything we do is work and it, we do get tired and we get weary and our brain gets tired and, and we end up needing glasses, and, you mm -hmm. know, uh, from all that work. Even, even if it's God led, it, it, the flesh is just weak. You know, it's just, it's, it's tiring where in the future, there's no getting tired or growing weary, you mm -hmm. know, in the, in the spirit. So, well, you know, if you think about how people that go to medical school, yeah, and then they they do these internships, and there is like, like they they don't sleep, you know, they yeah. just go on and on, and and it, that's burdensome, you yeah. know. Yeah. To uh, it just amazes me how can people who are called yeah. to take care of people exist on no sleep you know but it just seems to be part of their training yeah 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 amen okay let's get a supporting verse here ecclesiastes chapter 3 verses 10 and 11 i have seen the god-given task with which the sons of men are to be occupied he has made everything beautiful in its time. Also, he has put eternity in their hearts, except that no one can find out the work that God does from beginning to end. Amen. Very true. We're just created simple beings, and we're not God. It hurts my head when I start to think about how God does everything. <laughs> Even with the insurmountable time that he gave us, we're not able to figure it out to learn it. There are those that are trying, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Every day, they're trying to figure it out. To no avail. Right. All right. Verse 14. I have seen all the works that are done under the sun, and indeed all this vanity and grasping for the wind. Amen. I see this as you asking about being spirit led or not. <clears throat> because anything is just of the world or all that, it's just temporary and it doesn't have eternal value. It's spirit-led works like Abraham obeyed God when God said to move and do things. Those have eternal value because it's for the it's for the kingdom. It's, it's kingdom right, God. yeah. It's spirit-led. But I believe Ecclesiastes is really written not about spirit-led stuff. It's just about the world and the way it works. Yes, it is. Yeah. And the world is of the flesh. Yes. The pursuit of man. Mm -hmm. That it profits nothing. All this vanity. Another supporting verse, Ecclesiastes chapter 2, verse 11. And I looked on all the works that my hands had done, and on the labor in which I had toiled, and indeed all was vanity and grasping for the wind. There was no profit under the sun. Amen. We work, we work, and work, and it profits nothing. I mean, we don't know it. I mean, we don't understand about God and his kingdom. We see that we work and we get money or we get, you know, achieve and all that kind of stuff. We think that's something, but it's just very temporary in the scheme of eternal life, right? Amen. For all the promotions and all those things. Right. They 
proper method in the world of God. Gave the, Jesus gave the example of the guy who had all this crops that he got and he had more than he could put in his barn. So he said, I'm going to tear down my barn and build a bigger one and yeah. I'll be able to sit back and and take a couple of years off. And he says, fool, this day your soul will be required of you. Mm -hmm. Then whose who's stuff is that, right? Yeah. And we've seen it in, in our world today that people building their their kingdom and their fortunes and then before you know it they're gone and they're gone it's the same old right. story it's all temporary these people pass away you know this stuff gets all over them everybody is fighting over it taking over it. the pharaohs got their stuff buried with them but now we're pulling it all out so <laughs> still still somebody else is getting it. yeah that's right yeah. 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 Okay, verse 15. What is crooked cannot be made straight, and what is lacking cannot be made. Hmm. Mm -hmm. It just is God's word. Nothing can be added to it, and nothing can be taken. Sure. Didn't add to it, but take from it. The sense of this Ecclesiastes, I'm trying to see what what is King Solomon trying to say about life here, right? Living in this world. Mm. And what could be crooked that needs to be made straight? A crooked person cannot be made straight. <laughs> Without God. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think that's the thing. He's looking at this whole thing without God. Yes, yeah, yeah. It's, absolutely. It's just so one dimensional that okay. doesn't even allow for the fact that God can heal a blind man and God can take the road that we're walking on. And, you know, he says, um, wide is the road that is full of destruction and narrow is the way so god can cause a person to go the right way but if you if you if you subtract god from the whole equation it's like oh everything is pretty dark and yeah. gray <laughs> yes that's right no room for any sunlight so i think the case has a, it represents that it's just looking at things without god mm -hmm. The whole book is looking at until the end. And it's about looking at things about that. Yeah, that's why I mentioned last week that with the Old Testament, I don't know if there's a more more of a wake up call than reading Ecclesiastes to the fact that we need God because it just really lays it out there. Yes, it does. Yeah. My life before God called me was all of this stuff, you know? And these are really powerful words of wisdom, actually. Mm -hmm. All right, supporting verse. Ecclesiastes 3, verse 14. I know that whatever God does, it shall be forever. Nothing can be added to it and nothing taken from it. God does it that men should fear before him. Amen. Mm. <clears throat> yes. That's for sure. Not even the 
head serpent Satan himself can't do anything without God allowing it. Verse 16, I commune with my heart, saying, look, I have attained greatness, and I have gained more wisdom than all who were before me in Jerusalem. My heart has understood great wisdom and knowledge. Mm -hmm. Can you in my heart? <laughs> right, right. Can you Talking to yourself, basically, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. I'm sure he's not the only person who said that. But what he's not saying huh. is about the, it's the wisdom of God. Right. Heart well, has understood great wisdom and knowledge, but because that when you commune with your heart, you're communing with God, really. Because that is your heart. God is your heart. Well, yeah, I, I think I I agree with you, Pastor Rufus, but I think in this sense, this is um this is the vanity of life that we're talking about here where I think many of people, whether they recognize God or not, you remember um, Nebuchadnezzar, right? Look at this great city that I built, right? Mm -hmm. All this stuff, I'm more powerful, more the richest or whatever the case. And I, that's why I say a lot of people today, they build their empires and they, they accomplish so many things and they get a bunch of degrees or whatever the case. Look what I've done. I've outdone everyone. We have the Olympics going on right now. Yeah. Gold medal, right? All that kind of stuff. And I think what we're going to see is that all of that is vanity. Yeah. Right. Right. Now, my one time, Solomon was just like this. Well, yeah, he's confessing. This is all his, his 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 story, right? Yeah. Himself. Yeah. Compare that with when when Solomon was took over as king and said, "I'm but a youth, and I I don't know how to look after these people." He was low and humble, and he asked for wisdom, but the wisdom got to him. That's why Paul, with the thorn in his flesh, knew that he needed something to buffet him, otherwise he'd get full of himself as well. Because God gave him so much revelation, right? That's right. Wisdom, power, money, all those things tend to corrupt the flesh. Same number of things, but same. wisest of them all. First Kings chapter 3 verse 12. Ah, there it is. God's answering Solomon's prayers. Behold, I have done according to your words. See, I have given you a wise and understanding heart. So that there has not been anyone like you before you, nor shall any like arise, you arise after you. There it is. God did it. God did it. Amen. Verse 17. And I set my heart to know wisdom and to know madness and folly. I perceive that this also is grasping for the wind. Okay. 
So he experienced the effects of wisdom, but maybe thinking that it was his wisdom made him mad. So. Well, possible, yeah. I mean, to know madness and folly is basically, you know, just constantly consuming, learning about what everybody does and mm -hmm. there's probably, you know, there's probably a lot of people who are doing a lot of crazy things and he looked into that too. He looked into everything because he had access to everything. He's the king. Mm -hmm. He's got the money. He's got the wisdom. He's got, he can look into anything he wants. But now... He sees it was all worthless. Grasping for the wind. It's not not there. <laughs> it's not there. You reach for it, but it's nothing there. Grasping you can't say for the that wind. You can't say that apart from God. <clears throat> you know, it's the problem with all the things he was learning. Then you can say like that. Uh, supporting verses as Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verses 23 through 25. All this I have proved by wisdom. I said, I will be wise, but it was far from me. As oh, you want to talk about that? No, no, oh. that's okay. As for that which is far off and exceedingly deep, who can find it out? Mm. I applied my heart to know, to search and seek out wisdom and the reason of things, to know the wickedness of folly, even foolishness and madness. Amen. So this kind of supports that verse really well. Like he was just looking at all of all the stuff. All the stuff. Yeah. Find the heart to know. Could you go back to verse 23? Uh-huh. It said, I will be wise, but it was far from me. Well, there's something, there's wisdom in that statement. Sure. To know that wisdom is far from you. So it's almost as if God opened up the window shade a little bit and gave him that realization that, wisdom is far from you you know no matter what you do you can go to the ends of the earth but if you try to do it without me it'll all be far from you very good well, you know. very good exceedingly deep <laughs> That's deep. That's deep. <laughs> All right, verse 18. It says, For in much wisdom is much grief, mm -hmm. and he who increases knowledge increases sorrow. Mm -hmm. Amen. So this reminds me of the, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. <laughs> So, you know, to have the knowledge of good and evil, you've got the knowledge of pain and anguish and, 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 and the other side of that, the good, uh, the goodness and, and the joy and, and, and how, how, how they're so far apart, but yet at the same time, you know, what is it that, uh, I don't know if it's in the Bible or not, but like in order to really appreciate goodness and peace, you have to have experienced what's on the other side of that coin. You know, I mean, I don't know. You just answered the question of why people say, why are bad things happening in this world? Mm -hmm. Why is all this stuff? You, mm -hmm. that, that's exactly what it is. Mm -hmm. We can't know the goodness of God, the mercy of God, the peace that God gives or anything unless we've been through things 
experienced it and then we can contrast that with who God is. We don't know he's gracious unless he shows us grace. We don't know he's merciful unless he shows us mercy. And we don't know that he's a healer unless we experience pain, right? So that's exactly why God allows all this stuff. Hardships and trouble and everything else is so that we can get to know him and his goodness and appreciate everything that he does and gives us. And at the beginning when Adam and Eve ate from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, that's when all the the torment started. That's right. That's when the shame and embarrassment and, um, you know, just, and then God put them out of the garden and they had to till the soil and, and, and to have food to eat. They had to work, 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 work just to have food to eat. And, and, yeah, it's it's heavy. It's heavy stuff here. It's good stuff. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It's in, in the world. Supporting verses. Oh, well, here we go. <laughs> We've got the end here. Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verses 12 and 13. And further, my son, be admonished by these. Of making many books there is no end, and much study is wearisome to the flesh. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is man's whole. Amen. I can remember when I was a kid and going to school, I would think I'd have these thoughts when I'd have to get up in the morning and go to school. And I would think, is this ever going to be over? <laughs> you know? And I'd be like seven. <laughs> is this ever going to be over? Having to go to school. Oh, no. Never go <laughs> that was the last verse, huh? That was the last verse, yeah. Oh, but that was a... That was the supporting verse for... 18. 18. Oh, yeah. wow. And so that last verse is the very last verse in all of Ecclesiastes, yeah. right? There's one more verse after this. Oh. Verse 14. Okay. For God will bring every work into the judgment, whether it was good or evil. Something along oh, yes, those lines. Yes, I thought that too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, this, uh, this, this kind of conclusion here reminds me of... <clears throat> statement or what do you call it something someone wrote in my sister honey's yearbook when she graduated from high school and her name was rose it was a, her given name and she said oh, dear rose uh, to be seen stand up to be heard speak up to be appreciated, shut up. <laughs> yeah, that's the conclusion of the whole matter. Okay. Okay. Praise the Lord. Amen. I guess that would be closing. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time. Thank you for time together. Yeah, we truly thank you for us and us. And we learn from Ecclesiastes that all this vanity and it's grasping for the wind, but we know the conclusion is to just trust you and put our faith in you. We have let you do the work you're doing in us. And continue to follow you, guide you, and help us to just trust in you. 
And so I just pray for each and every person here tonight, those that hear this in the future, that you continue to write these words in the tablets of our heart, continue to give us all the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding that we learn from your word, and bless our night together, give us a good night rest, get us ready for the Sabbath message and the Sabbath day tomorrow, and we give you all the honor and all the praise and all the glory in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Amen.